In this video, I'm gonna try and justify why I purchased the Leica MP. So I'm gonna try and justify why it is that I purchased this super expensive camera. Um, and the first kind of thing that I should probably talk about is its design. So I love the black paint design. I think it's one of the most beautiful cameras that exists out there in the world. The first two cameras that I was trying to decide on was, well, first I was gonna keep the M2, but then I'm like, oh, I could sell both and get the MP and it could be sort of my forever camera. And then I started looking at the MA, which is basically the mechanical version of the MP, but with, in my opinion, uh, just a better black paint look, I guess. I really love the matte black of the MA and it's just such a sexy camera. Like if, you're, if we're talking sexy cameras, like that's a panty dropper. What it came down to was, you know, for an extra thousand bucks, you get the convenience of a light meter, even if I don't use it. Um, one thing I discovered shooting the M2 was that I really love shooting without a light meter. I loved sort of the freedom of not, you know, being tied down to a light meter of any kind. But uh, I just thought, you know, for an extra thousand bucks, if it's gonna be my forever camera that I'm gonna pass down to my children, whatever, um, I really just thought that, hey, I will just um, get the, the one with the light meter. It's still incredibly sexy. And to be honest, now that I have it in my hands and stuff, it's honestly my favorite looking camera out of the two. That's just me being biased and justifying it. The same way I'm trying to justify right now uh, of why I thought it was a good purchase. But okay, let's, let's continue. So the black paint, obviously number one. Um, but let's talk about just the design in general. It, it feels like a mishmash between my M2 and my M6. I looked and looked, I was on every waiting list to buy one just brand new, cause I'm like, ah, I might as well buy it new. It's the difference of a thousand bucks. Let's just, you know, purchase it brand new, whatever. But they're nowhere to be found. So I think what happens is they do like a production run. All these people get on the waiting list for them and uh, it's just really hard to get one brand new. I ended up finding one in Toronto. It was from a 2004 production run. <laughs> I see to it referred to online as the sandpaper model, but it has this unique sort of uh, sandpaper skin. I don't know what else to call it. The new ones now, if you were to get a new one, it actually comes with the traditional like leatherette, I believe, like the leather. My version has the sandpaper. A lot of people online hate it. I love it. I like it better than the leather. I've had the leather with the M6 and uh, yeah, I really love the earlier models for that reason. The other things I love that kind of came from the M2, the shutter lever, for example, it's metal. Metal is sort of one thing that I didn't realize was a necessity when it comes to um, Leica cameras that when I got the M6 and had, you know, the, I think it's the M4 that started the sort of plasticky shutter lever. Um, it just felt so, like my M2, every time I cocked it, it just felt so much better and like more like, you know, and, uh, and my M6, every time I did it, it just felt a little toyish. If you have an M6, you probably don't even know that unless you've had other Leicas. This, uh, rewind knob, you know, the M6 had the side one that you kind of flip out the lever. You give it a quick little, you know, one of these, this one, you pop up and then you turn it to the right. It's slower, but I like it. I feel like it, it, you look cooler. You feel more like old school, you know, like you know that someone in 1958 was like, you know, about to photograph Frank Sinatra and he was just, just slowly, you know, having a cigarette, just winding, talking to Frank. I don't know. There's just something about the old timer feel that I really loved about my M2. Um, like the, the slow loading system of the M2 I even loved. Uh, that's another upgrade that the MP has is it has the fast loading system. So it's quicker to load film. I like both versions. I know that a lot of people like the fast loading system because it's extremely easy and it is, but the old version's kind of cool too. So for me, it's not really an upgrade because I like them both, but it is nice to have. Like, that's what I mean. There's a lot of little conveniences in here that like, it's nice to have. It's not a deal breaker for me by any means, but I just knew that if I'm going to have one camera forever, I'm not splurge a little bit, you know, I'll sell some shit. I got, 
a basement full of shit, as you can see. Some other features about this uh, is the ISO dial. It's a little bit different from my M2. This one has some updated ISO information, so it makes sense. You know, like when I was shooting uh, film at ISO 800 speed, I would just turn the dial on my M2 to like the 80, and that would tell me that it was 800. Uh, but now I can actually select 800, so that's nice. The shutter dial, that was one thing actually that when I had my M2, I I didn't even really think about it, but then I got the M6 TTL, and one of the things that's great about the M6 TTL is the big shutter dial, and the fact that it turns the way the arrows in the light meter point. There's two arrows that go like this, and then there's a dot in the middle that tell you you're exposed perfectly. So if you need to, whatever, increase or decrease your exposure, one of the arrows will light up to tell you to go that way or that way. And in the classic version, you actually have to go against the direction of the arrow in order to achieve the correct exposure. Um, same with this MP, you gotta do that with the M6 TTL. If the arrow points right, you turn the dial to the right and, uh, and that's how you achieve your exposure. So I think that makes way more sense. Um, I guess that when they introduced the M6 TTL, there was a lot of noise drummed up by the Leica purists who appreciated you know, every other Leica had this little dial that went the other way. Um, and so they didn't like the, the M6 TTL dial, so they made a big stink and of course, like listened, because that's what they do, and they went backwards. So to me, and especially if you have one Leica, uh, it, this doesn't make a difference. Um, the only way you notice it is if you have the M6 TTL, which I did, um, so I know that it exists. So I wish that the dial was the same, but that being said, I also like the look of this little dial a lot better. It just looks sick. And then the only other thing uh, I would say about this is the frame counter. It's an automatic frame counter that you get. My M2 had a manual one, which I didn't mind either. You just incorporate it into your process. You know, you load the film, manually set your shutter counter. It's, those things don't really bother me, but again, clearly I like the old M bodies a lot. My M2 felt like it was built for like literal war, and my M6 felt like it was built for like, I don't know, shooting a wedding or something, you know? Like there's just something different about it. That's kind of the design. My version of the MP, it's the 0.72 magnification. So the standard MP viewfinder, it comes in the 58 and the 85 as well, or 0 0.58, 0 0.85. Um, so if you're a 28 millimeter shooter, the 58 is a great option because it's just a better viewfinder for if you're just like a strictly 28. The 85 is great if you're a 50 shooter. They say that it, that's like the best magnification. The biggest thing that I loved about my M2 was the viewfinder in general. The frame lines of it were just beautiful, just clean. There's one frame, either 35, 50, or a 90. And there's nothing else in the viewfinder that's getting in the way. With my MP, it had the pairings. It has the pairings, 28, 90. 35, 135, and uh, 50, 75. So it's just a little annoying, kind of, and I know you can probably get that modded out. You can get the ones that you don't use masked out if you want, but I'm not gonna do that. You never know when you might come across a 135 millimeter lens at Value Village. True story, my neighbor found a Leica camera at Value Village for 15 bucks. Some other considerations that I told myself when I was trying to justify this huge purchase, because if you don't know, the MP and the MA are probably, are, they are the most expensive like uh, analog cameras that you can buy, other than like the rare versions, you know, like the M3 black paint and like things that are super rare like that. Those are obviously, you know, collector's items and they're worth a lot more but like the the actual market value uh, of the MP is extremely expensive you know I think in Canadian dollars so I'm not sure what they are in US I'll put them up on the screen somewhere uh, what the prices are of these brand new but the MA and the MP are the only analog cameras that Leica still makes so one of the things that I told myself was that um, you know these are still serviceable you know what I didn't mention was that they have light meters that's another convenience plus clearly it's not that important to me um, which is why you know I didn't mention it but to a lot of people I know that the light meter is super super important I almost went for the black MA because I think that's the nicest prettiest design 
camera out of any of the Leica M models. But ultimately I just said if this is going to be the camera that I shoot until I'm 90, it would probably be nice to just have a light meter there if I ever needed it. Um, and you know, it's something handy, not something I need, but it's just something that's nice to, to have. It's like the modern day flippy screen or whatever. You know, if my light meter were to break, Leica still services these MPs and uh, you know, I could get a fully serviced. I can get it completely fixed if anything goes wrong with this camera. And that was a huge thing because I had read online in a lot of places that M6 light meters are quite a bit more difficult and are becoming more scarce, scarce, scarce scarce. They're becoming harder and harder to find and to get someone who can actually, you know, service it. So, because I don't believe Leica services M6s anymore. So that's the downside if you have an M6. Sorry about it. You probably knew that already. I've been shooting with this camera for three months, so there's no way I'm going to do a review about it. But this is my experience with it so far. It, for me, for me, is 100% worth the money. And it's not something I ever thought that I would be able to achieve or get to a place where I could afford one. But you know, you get older, your career goes in different places. Suddenly you find yourself in a position to at least get into dabbling in Leica, which is what I did. I bought the M2. And then you just, I don't even know how I got here, to be honest. I never ever even, you know, I didn't even really know about the Leica MP until a couple of years ago. That's the beauty of Leica is there's, it seems like there's something for everybody and for myself. It really is the MP. I've never shot a camera that even comes close to the experience that I have when I shoot this. To me, that is worth the price tag. And I know to a lot of people it isn't. Like, I know that they're extremely expensive. I was one of those people that was commenting online five years ago that, oh, my Sony camera is so much better than your Leica. They're so expensive for no features that you get. You know, it's true. It's, it's the truth. But you're not necessarily paying for... Uh, you know, the most modern features with the Leica, actually you're not. What it is, is the experience you get. Like, I've never had more fun shooting than I do when I pick this up. Bring it everywhere with me. It's my everyday camera. I hope in 20 years it's going to be beat the shit, but it'll still be going. And to me, you know, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, um, you know, my M2 was in, made in the 50s, so that's, that's worth it to me. If I were to sell this today, I would make more money than what I paid for it. For everyone who says the Leica MP isn't worth it, all I can say is that maybe for you it isn't. Um, there are a lot of amazing Leica cameras out there. I've shot them, I've played with them, I've held many of them. Um, I know a lot of people who love a lot of other Leica cameras. For me, it's the MP. I don't know if I justified it, but... Um, yeah, I hope that gave you a good overview of the camera, at least if you're thinking about buying it. If you have any questions, uh, drop them below. If you're still here, thanks for sticking around. Feel free to like the video, that would help the channel a lot. Consider subscribing, maybe hit that notification bell. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I will see you guys in the next video.